Example 48. Find the probability of a subject getting a positive result given that the subject does smoke marijuana. So when I read this first question here, I see that it's a probability question. That's obvious. I also see they're only taking one subject. And then finally, we have the phrase given that. That phrase given that, along with the fact that we're only taking one subject and we're asked to find the probability, that tells me this is the conditional rule for probability. And the probability we're finding is the probability a subject um, gets a positive result on a drug test given that the subject does smoke marijuana. So if the person does smoke marijuana, then of course, you know, a positive result here would just be confirming what's true, right? So we're asking what's the chance that the test catches them smoking marijuana. And then we're looking at the second question here. It says, do the problem again given the person does not smoke marijuana. So here we're looking at more of the scenario with a false positive, right? If we know the person does not smoke marijuana, we should not get a problem, um, you know, we should not have a positive result in the test, but that can happen, of course, sometimes. That would be the false positive error. So if you think about it, every person uh, can relate to this question on one side or the other. Either they're a person who does smoke marijuana and they're asking, hey, what's the chance that I get caught? Or they're a person who does not smoke marijuana and they're asking, hey, what's the chance that I get labeled a marijuana user even though I don't smoke, right? Okay, so that's the two questions being asked. They're both conditional probability because the presence of the phrase given that, right? And the fact that we're taking just one subject and it's a probability problem. So let's write out the two probabilities. The first one is the probability of a subject, that's one subject, getting a positive result. Then the phrase given that is a straight bar, right? The subject does smoke marijuana, so we're going to write does smoke. Okay. And then for the second probability, we're going to write that one down. It says do the problem again. So in other words, the probability of a positive test result, but this time it'll be given, right? Given the person does not smoke. So we're going to say does not smoke. Okay. And this should cover both scenarios for the positives, right? There are some positives where the test has made the right decision because the person does smoke, and there are some positives where the test has made the wrong decision because the person does not smoke. And our goal is to figure out the probabilities for both of these events. All right, now, let's take a look at the column that corresponds to does use marijuana because that's what we'll be focusing on in this part of the problem, right? So it says, did the subject use marijuana basically? And there's two possibilities, either yes or no. The yes column is the column we want to focus on because we're interested in the people who do smoke marijuana here for this part of the problem. All right, so the total becomes our denominator. So we're going to go ahead and write that as 122. And then we're just looking to see which of these numbers remaining becomes the numerator. Well, the number remaining should correspond to positive. So between the two numbers left over, 119 is the number that is in the positive row, right? So that will be the number we'll take. When you look at the second probability, we're looking at the row or column that corresponds to does not smoke marijuana, and that would be this column, right? Does the subject use? No, they don't. So we're going to focus on that. The denominator becomes the total of that column, right, which is 178. And then we're simply looking for the number that corresponds to positive among the remaining two numbers, right? So among the remaining two numbers in that column, positive test results, 24 fit that criteria. Okay, let's work these out and get the decimal numbers so we can make more sense of these numbers. Already you can see that this seems to be a much higher probability, right? But if I work it out, 119 divided by 122, I see that it's a 97.5% chance, right? 0.975. So that means overwhelmingly likely that you will get caught if you do smoke by this test. This drug test is good at catching people. It only misses people apparently 2.5% of the time. Let's look at the other one, right? The other one, 24 divided by 178, that produces an answer of 13.5%. That's a terrible result, right? So this first result, that's pretty good, right? 97.5% of the time, so almost 98% of the time, they would catch the users, right? So the test is pretty good at catching people who use marijuana. But you can see here, the trade-off is, is that they label a lot of people who don't use marijuana drug users, right? And so that's bad because it ruins their reputation. It also makes it, what, questionable whether you can trust a person's test results when they do get labeled a drug user. You might say, hmm, well, how do I know it's correct, right? Like in this scenario, you know the person does not smoke, right? So that's a guarantee. The person doesn't smoke, but yet the person still has a 13.5% chance of being told by the test that he's a drug user. And in this scenario, you know the person does smoke, 
what's the chance they're going to get away with it? Not very good, only two and a half percent, right? So the fact is, is that you know the person here is overwhelmingly likely to get caught. The person here, though, as a result, is going to be mislabeled too too much of the time. So that's kind of the trade-off when you have a poor test. You know, it doesn't have a good ability to uh, distinguish between users and non-users. So sometimes they will kind of up the sensitivity of the test so it catches a lot of people, right? It doesn't let a lot of people slip through the cracks and get away with it. But as a result, it false alarms, you know, goes off for people that aren't actually using drugs and labels them drug users. And so in my opinion, this type of test should not be used 13.5% of the time. It's just too high to label people drug users when they're not.